And now for centripetal force. So this is the push or pull, just like we called it um, when we did uh, linear kinematics, that moves an object around a circle. around a circle. Well, since we've already done the centripetal acceleration, there really isn't much to it. It's simply that the centripetal force equals ma, right? The mass times the centripetal acceleration. And since we have this simple uh, relationship, they must be in the same direction. This vector is a constant, a scalar constant times that vector then the centripetal force is also center seeking. It also points inside the circle. So if here's our circle, and here's the center, and here's our axis, and here's our mass there, and it's at some position theta, and it has some speed that way due to a velocity that way, and it has going at some omega vector that way, and it has some centripetal acceleration that way, where's the force in all this? Uh, let me get rid of the omega just to make a little room for it. The force is just right along with AC. It's the force that pulls inward in, uh, in the case of this thing uh, was attached to a string. So all we got to do is plug in our expression for AC. The centripetal force is M, and this was V squared over R. V squared over R, and it points the same direction is the acceleration of the centripetal acceleration, so it's uh, toward the center. So there it is, the centripetal force. Now there's one thing I want to make very clear. The centripetal force is not a result of circular motion. Right? It causes circular motion. So this is not some new force that we haven't covered yet, that we haven't described. Physically, it has to be one of the forces we've already talked about. It has to be gravity, or maybe tension force, or maybe normal force, or something. So it's a real physical force, like we talked about on our tour de force. It's not some new, new idea, okay? So let's look at a case of circular motion and see if we can figure out what force is making us, making the object move in a circle. So here we have an air track where something can float around um, in two dimensions, like this little mass, right? So the mass is just a disc. And now I'm gonna attach a string to this peg in the middle that's bolted down, and I'm gonna attach it to the mass, and we're gonna make the mass execute circular motion. So there it is, round and round and round it goes. And you could say, what force, what is the centripetal force? Well, it's the center seeking force that's pushing in on the mass, and in this case, it's tension. It's the tension in the string that actually has these two attached to each other that's creating the circular motion. And now that we have all these vectors laid out, we have a bunch of vectors, right? We have the velocity, the instantaneous velocity, the acceleration, the force, omega, all these, we can actually answer a question that comes up a lot in circular motion, commonly asked question, and that is you're spinning a ball on a string. So let me get some nice circular motion going like this. So here we got tennis ball on a spring, string, circular motion. Again, the circular motion is being caused by the tension in the string. Now this is not quite ideal circular motion like on the air table. If you look at my hand, I'm kind of moving a little bit in a circle because I'm having to pump energy in. And I'm having to do that because we're losing energy uh, due to friction and air resistance. So it's pretty close to circular motion. But what I, wanna, what I wanna illustrate is what happens when we take away the force. If I let go of the string, we take away tension. And let's see which way it moves. Here we go. So now we're gonna look at that again slow motion, and you can see very clearly that the instant you release 
the tension, the string, or the mass, your intuition might say it goes out that way, because right? it's being pulled by the string, and you take away the string, it wants to fly away from the circle. No, it goes this way. The instant you release the force of the string, the centripetal force, we have uh, Newton's first law. An object in motion wants to stay in motion. So if it was moving with this velocity, when we release the force, it continues to move with that velocity, as you were just able to see. A last quick question we could ask is how much work does it take to do circular motion, or uniform circular motion? Well, remember, work is FD, the force, times whatever displacement it's going through, D times cosine of the angle in between. But for circular motion, that's what's special about circular motion. The force is this way, the motion is that way. Force D, the displacement along the circle, it's always 90 degrees. Right? So F times D times the cosine of 90 degrees equals zero. You don't have to do any work to hold something in circular motion. And if you think about it, that makes sense. In uniform circular motion, the, the speed is the same. The kinetic energy is the same. You don't have to put in kinetic energy. You just have to have a force that will keep changing the direction of, of, the, uh, of the motion, the, the, the velocity, the instantaneous velocity vector. So in the case of the air table, the tension in the string, it didn't really do anything. All it was was redirecting the mass. It wasn't doing any work. When I was spinning it in my hand, I was having to do a little bit of work. I was kind of dragging it around. This is my hand was going in a circle, but that was just to make up for uh, friction and air resistance. Okay? But in ideal, no work is done.